So with this microphone, I oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree, guys. It's definitely way better with the microphone. All right, I'm gonna, I'll leave the microphone in. That was another thing I had to test. You know, I, I'm really sorry for for. I'm obviously not a professional live streamer, and I do the live streaming for you guys because I want. I, this is my chance to really talk to a lot of you at once, but also, uh, some of you. Uh, you like you like live streams and you want to be able to sort of you know talk to me one on sort of this is sort of a one on one but it's you know being live it's more fun because you you really get to meet me for me and not the edited version of me on the uh, on the videos so so this is cool and some of you actually the guys that are in my my chat right now uh, you know I've talked to a lot of you guys quite a bit so it's really cool to see you here uh, Ken I appreciate you showing up as well um, so. Uh, so sorry if if this isn't as professional as maybe some other guys do it because I, I I personally just like to test and make sure I have things good for you. So moving forward now, the camera has very good video. It should be a 1080p camera, and now I know with the microphone the audio is better. I was trying to test this out previously, but without being live, I'm never really going to know. So I'm sorry if this isn't as professional as usual. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any topics you want to talk about, feel free to feel free to post anything. You know, I, I like it when you guys bring stuff up because then I can sort of riff a little bit on my view on things or at least talk about stuff. And that my my subject was really going to be um, uh, dealing with like suspension and tires. I it might be it might sound like sort of a boring conversation, but for me it was uh, it's I think they're the most important things when it comes to a car. Because you can add, you know, I've watched people add 500 horsepower, 600 horsepower. Some cars have 800 horsepower, but then when you look at the car, it's got 800 horsepower, but you're still running brakes from the 80s or the 90s, and you have these like single piston calipers. You know, Ken, you're from the uh, you're from the G8 SS world. You know what? It, you, you've probably seen your fair share of like crashed G8s. Th these are guys that have like a like a 427 with 600 horsepower, 700 horsepower in their car, but they're still running like the base G8 brakes. And you see these these cars weigh like 4,000 pounds. So to me, it's like the next step should really, actually the first step should be like big brake kit, uh, good tires, and then suspension. Or, or basically big brake kit always first, suspension then tires. So the, to me, it's very important. And I've seen situations where, like even on my own cars, uh, for example, I have my Chevy SS getting a uh, custom alignment done right now. So, so the Chevy SS, like the specs here, I think I actually have the paperwork in front of me actually because I was dealing with it this week. Here. So just so anyone knows or doesn't know, this is an alignment spec uh, basically on... That's the alignment numbers. Actually, I just realized. Let me... Give me a second. Okay, so that's the alignment numbers that you would be dealing with on an alignment machine. So these are basically what you want to get the car to. If you see, I set the car up to have a negative one degree on all of my camber. Uh, the reason I did that, your alignment section from the factory might be like 0.4 to 5. And what, what's happening is like when you run negative camber and you see like a 0.5, your wheels are sort of straight up and down, and then that tiny bit of camber pulls the wheels in. So when you go negative, your wheels are sort of coming inward. I run a lot more negative camber. I like the wheels to be further in, and here's the reason for that. It takes a car from feeling like it sort of wanders and bounces all over the place to it actually tightens the suspension up. So even a factory suspension sometimes can benefit greatly with a little bit more negative camber. It's not so much camber you're going to notice it, but it's enough camber to pull the wheels in a little bit. You actually tighten up all the slop in the suspension. And then what happens is when you go around a turn, let's say you have a camber set very lightly. When you go around a turn, what happens is the wheels tip. So the outer tread sort of tips off the road. So you're only really grabbing the road with like half of your tire tread. The rest of the tire sort of lifts. When you have a little bit more negative camber, you have a little less tire tread on one side, but when you're going around that turn, you have more tread contact in the road instead of the top, the tire lifting. So it actually sort of transforms how the car goes around a turn. And then going straight down the road, because of that, you know, camber, what it's doing is forcing a little bit of load on the suspension and it takes out the slop. 
So it actually feels like you have a completely new suspension on the car. Um, baseball and a bit as well. Yeah, yeah, I talk to you every once in a while about your kids doing baseball. Um, you know, it's amazing. <laughs> Thanks to guys like you, like, you know, every once in a while I'll look at a profile and, and I'll come across somebody like with their kids and I'll realize you're a dad. Uh, I talk to a lot of people, but lately I've been asking like, hey, are you, are you a dad? And I think it's a weird question for certain people, but for me it's because I'm a dad and, you know, I, I like to know who else is a dad so we can talk about parent stuff, you know. Um, and then my other, uh, I guess the other thing I wanted to talk about was tires. Uh, you know, I, I, I see a lot of people run... Basically, they'll, they'll build a car with a lot of horsepower. I mean, you know, even if it's like a Honda Civic, a lot of horsepower in a Civic could be 500 horsepower. But you run into a situation where you have a car that causes torque steer. Let's say, let's say in a Honda Civic, right? You have a car that causes torque steer when you hit the gas. Well, two reasons for that are going to be you have crappy tires and you're not putting the power down. So the car is sort of all over the place and sort of burns out a little bit. And then when it grabs, the car has understeer and then oversteer. Um, negative camera. Yes. Negative camera does impact tire wear. So it depends on the vehicle. So for example, um, if you're, if it's a car that you drive on the weekends, you'll probably won't notice tire wear problems for a few years. Uh, if it's, a, but again, you know, rubber is only good for so long, so it doesn't matter at that point. Uh, if it's a car that you drive every single day and you're trying to get, uh, Let's say you want to try and get like 30,000 miles out of a set of tires because you drive every day or you probably drive, you know, maybe you have an hour commute, then you want your tires to last. You might not want to run negative camber. I'm really talking about cars that you want to handle good. Like for me, like my Chevy SS, that's a car that pretty much is garage kept and then I'll take it out for an hour or two. Maybe I'll take it on a five hour drive. So when I drive that car, I want that car to be perfect at all times. I want it to handle good. I want it to brake good. Uh, so that kind of a car is a car that I'll put some negative camber into. A daily driver, I might not put as negative, but I will run a little bit more. Basically, let's say a spec would be like point. Let's say a spec would be like point six degrees of camber. Uh, let's say you know point six degrees, and then I, I might run maybe maybe like a eight just to give it a little bit more, just to tighten up that slop, but not so much that it'll actually affect the tires. Um, and then going back to tires, like, so, so if you, let's say you have like a 900 horsepower civic and you have all of those problems or maybe even a cruise too, if anybody has anything that powerful, having crappy tires is sort of added security for your drive line. Like tires that don't grip, they'll spin, but tires that do grip might shock load your transmission. So I get sometimes that makes sense. Uh, you want that. But in a situation where it's a street car that you are driving and you're putting horsepower into and you're like like maybe putting your family in the car, I would say, you know, focus a little bit more on getting your camber to be in a spec that you can have better handling. Make sure you're using tires that have a good, uh, good grip, good tread wear. I mean, I don't like, I personally don't like cheap tires, but I, I do... Um, I do like to have a tire on the car that even if it is cheaper, it does have a good rating, obviously because I have a family. Hey Joshua, I have a 2015 diesel cruise and I was wondering about how should I go about a turbo upgrade? Um, I think Matt from Turbo Bay, Turbo Bay has a lot of parts that they make for cars. Their website is a little outdated. So if you actually call the number and you talk to the talk to Matt, he probably has an upgrade for that. Uh, he's a really cool guy. So uh, I talk to him every once in a while, obviously because I have his turbo on my car, and uh, waiting for a tune. I'm just going through some other stuff on the car, and and I've been uh, having him go back and forth with me. And I like that I can get him on the phone, which is cool. So definitely give him a call. Uh, maybe later on, what I'll do if I remember is I'll put uh, a link to his website in the, uh, I think it's just turbobayperformance.com. Uh, definitely give him a call. And then, oh, I had another, I had another subject I wanted to come up or wanted to talk about with tires. So just throwing a tire on a rim and, uh, and just putting it on the car doesn't mean that that wheel's balanced. Uh, so, uh, all right, let me, let me say this again. Just throwing a tire on a rim and balancing that tire does not mean that that tire is a good tire. It does not mean 
that the wheels are balanced properly. I get a lot of, so basically all the cars I've had over the years, I'm probably on like 40 cars at this point in my life. I've had to buy a ton of sets of tires over the years. I mean, I've been driving for over 20 years. So a lot of times what I try and do is I try and find a company that has the, that has the Hunter Road Force machine. And on top of the Hunter Road Force machine, there's an upgrade you can get that actually shows you like poles and that actually, it actually puts pressure on the tire tread. So in a situation where you put a new tire on, just recently, in fact, like two days ago, I had four new tires put on a car and I had a really nasty pull to the right. And you can feel it in the wheel while you're driving and when you let go of the wheel, the car would just steer right. And the reason for that was, in the end, uh, the, the front right tire was the problem. Now these are four brand new tires. On the road force machine, it will actually show you if the tire tracks straight, it'll show you a left arrow or a right arrow. So if there's a problem with the tread, it'll actually pick up tread problems. Also, if the tread isn't quite right, what ends up happening is you can get vibrations too. So even though it, it might balance normal on a machine that's only spinning the wheel at like 30 miles an hour, when you're on the highway or going down the road and you're dealing with like, you know, an aggressive rut in the road or you're dealing with uh, asphalt on the road, then what happens is those tires end up fighting you while you're driving. So you want to try and get a Hunter Road Force done because it'll actually pick up, it'll actually reproduce what happens on the road on the tire on the, um, on the machine. That way, if there's any problems the tech that's working with those tires can figure out what's wrong. So I was able to get one of those tires warrantied. I had to, I had to actually go from one shop to another shop because I didn't trust the, the shop I took the car to didn't have a Hunter road force machine, but I knew it was the tires because of how many tires I bought before and how many tires I've gotten rid of. So what ended up happening was I took it from that shop to another shop that did have their Hunter road force, had them road force balance all four tires. Three of the tires had basically a low, a low road force um, resistance. So three of the tires had under 15, I forget how it is, like 15 pounds of road force or something like that. One tire, no matter what they did, was at 24. So they were able to warranty that because even though that wasn't their shop that put them on originally, the other shop, I had a receipt and I, I was like, look, these things are new and he was able to warranty it. Now the new tire is at nine. So... It's going to be a big difference. I can't wait to get the car back. The alignment's set up to the specs that I want, and I'm very excited. So I want you guys to know that these things exist because the average consumer doesn't realize that there's way better machines out there. And a lot of times when you hate something on a car, your car might vibrate on the highway and you might take the wheels to get balanced four or five times. And you have to realize that there's better balancing machines that can really clear up those problems. Uh, let's see. I want to catch up on some questions. Uh, keep up the hard work. I appreciate that. Um, hope you're having a good start to the weekend. I am. Uh, my kid starts baseball today, so I'm going to go to a baseball game later, and hopefully it's going to be fun. Uh, never believed road force balancing made a big difference. Well, David, so that's the thing. Road force balancing might not make a difference if there's something wrong with the car or the road force balancing machine they're using isn't the good one. There's like three big machines I can think of. Like they have different versions. So the road force machine is very expensive. So if a shop just has like the basic machine, a basic road force machine is just a, a, a wheel balancer. Then you have the road force version, which basically is a balancer. And there's this wheel that touches the tread. And that's what puts the pressure on the, on the tire to, to really feel what the tire is doing. Because what it's doing is it's adding the weight of the car to the tire and it's simulating the road. If the place you go to has a road force machine, but they don't have that wheel on the front, you're basically paying for the name. You're not paying for the actual machine to do the work. Um, and then the other one is if you go look at a road force machine that has that big roller wheel and a TV screen, that's the one that you want. There, there's a couple different versions. So if you, if you feel the road force didn't make a difference, either the tech didn't know what they were doing or they did know what they were doing, but the, but the machine they have isn't very good. Um, so that's, that's just my two cents on it. And I've learned my lesson just so you guys know, I have probably 15 shops near me that I can go have tires put on, but the one shop that has the road force machine I'm talking about, I have to drive an hour and a half round trip to go to, which is why I started at one place local because my wife asked me to. And then I ended up out the, at the other place because I know they know what they're doing. And I can get the owner on the phone. In fact, he was texting me, letting me know about the tires. And he doesn't even know I do YouTube. He, they're just good people. And I really like them. 
Um, in fact, if you're wondering, I, I'll give them a shout out. It's GW Tire in, uh, what's the town? I mean, obviously it's, uh, I'm in New Jersey. Uh, what is the town over there? Cream Ridge or something like that? I think it's Cream Ridge. Uh, they're, they're good people. Uh, hope you're not getting snow like we are. Where are you guys getting snow right now? Are you in Canada, Beal? I know some parts of, uh, I want to say like Minnesota area might be getting hit with snow too. Which is crazy because I sort of feel like spring finally came. And But then again, like uh, if you guys are part of the membership, uh, you'll see that um, I was posting some videos where I was trying to get the uh, Miata back on the road and I was dealing with it was like every day it was like it was like started out sunny then it would be rain then it would get sunny then it would snow then it would be sunny I walk outside torrential downpour and then heavy winds and then it would drop to 20 degrees so I'm not surprised oh Ohio wow I didn't realize you guys were getting snow over there I'm sorry you're dealing with that but hopefully it's just for one day and it's gone by tomorrow So I appreciate, I appreciate you guys jumping into this chat. I actually was worried that uh, nobody was going to be on it on a Saturday, which is why in the beginning I was sort of like just calling this a test. But there's so many people in here right now. I'm not going to close. I'm not going to close down the live stream right now. So I appreciate you guys jumping in. Thank you. Oh, oh and by the way, anybody who, uh, anyone who is trying to, I, I've had a lot of people ask me about uh, the membership. So people, some some of you guys are in the membership. Anybody with a badge, you guys are part of the membership, and I truly appreciate you guys. Other people are asking me how to get in because they can't find the join button. What's happening is, uh, if you have, I, I've been going back and forth with YouTube quite a bit about this. If you're running an iPhone, it will not show up on an iPhone usually. Um, if you go to the desktop, like if you actually go on a computer and you... Uh, you sign on to YouTube and you find my channel on the computer, the join button will be there. But if you sign on, like let's say you use your browser on your iPhone, the join button will not be there. So you guys that I'm sending links to, when you comment and you say, hey, how do you get to the to the um, the membership and I send you a link on an Android phone uh, or a Google phone, you'll be able to just click the link and then join. On iPhone or using the web browser on the iPhone, you cannot. Uh, you just have to go on your actual computer. I don't know why that's happening. I've tried everything in my power to fix it. So if, if anybody is looking to join, I appreciate you trying. And just go on your desktop if you, you, know, if you, if you wanted to make it work. And, and thank you uh, for the people who did show up this week. I really appreciate that as well. Uh, let's see, spring is trying to break through. Uh, it's, I'm reading these out loud because I think it's weird if you guys just see me silently read. All right, so Beal, uh, yes, it's going to be gone today, Monday and Tuesday. It's finally 67 degrees, and then it drops down. Yeah, I uh, I can't stand the weather. You know, I like some winter days, and I like a lot of summer days, but it ends up getting sometimes too hot or too cold. I just wish I could live in a place where it's, like, always 65, and I'd be so happy. Good weather in Minnesota, sunny and clear. Oh, nice. I didn't realize you were actually in Minnesota. I don't remember, Ken, if I ever asked you that before. Uh, you, we may have. I know, I know we talk a lot through email. Uh, you may have mentioned where you're from, but at the same time, we have a lot of conversations, so I don't remember every little, every, every, de I try my hardest to remember every detail. I can't remember every detail all the time. I'm jealous of your guys' good weather. I want to go, I want to go ride my motorcycle. Beal, what kind of bike do you have? I know I put some content on my channel. I have a, uh, I have a, uh, 2004 VMAX. It's a custom one. I tried doing some motorcycle videos, which I thought were fun. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, they get some decent views, but I'm, I've been so busy with the cruise right now because of what I'm trying to do with it that it's I haven't done any more. Uh, well, to be honest with you, here's what happened with my motorcycle. I took my bike out for the first time in months because I've been so busy. And uh, I, I got a friend to go with me, went out for a ride, and every time I stopped the motorcycle it overheated, but whenever I was moving, it would work fine. So either, I think the cooling fan might be messed up on the bike. It does have a radiator system with a water pump. It's not, it's not air. Well, all things are air cooled, but this bike specifically has a radiator with a water pump and a uh, cooling fan system. So I think the cooling fan went bad. So 
it's just one of those things that I parked because I'm so busy. I don't want to have a mo I, I don't, you know, my garage has the Cobra sitting in, sitting in it and the Corvette's in pieces right now. The Cruise is in pieces. I'm about to rip the Miata apart. I don't also want my motorcycle in pieces and as much as I miss riding it. Uh, Honda CB1000R. That's a nice bike. So is that one, the CB1000, that's basically a sport bike. Do you have the version where you have the, uh, the fairing that goes over the front so you really can't see the wheel? Um... You know, I like I like sport bike. I spe I love the way sport bikes sound. The only thing I just never loved about sport bikes is not I like to be able to see my front wheel while I'm riding. And it's just it's just a nervous tick that I have that I, I like to be able to place my wheel, especially with potholes. So sport bikes sort of sport bikes sort of um not scare me, but I just, you got to really get used to them. Uh, I bet your fan isn't spinning up quick. Yeah, mine, I think that's what's happening. Either the fan, it, the fan might have a resistor. Oh, it's a naked sport. Yeah, that, that I like, a naked sport bike. I like, uh, what do they call those? There was a name for them. Uh, I can't think of it right now because I wasn't planning on being in motorcycle mode, but I, I do like the naked look. I like them when they're naked and they have a really cool front, uh, like where the headlight would go. You have, oh, Street Fighter, that's what it is. I built a couple Street Fighters in the past. I really wish uh, I, I started my YouTube channel like like 10 years ago so I could have shown you guys all the really cool stuff I built. Uh, the stuff now is uh, I'm sort of starting over with some things and some of the some of the cars that I have now there's some some of the stuff is just too expensive to build. But I wish in the past when I was I wish I grew the channel earlier so I could show you really cool. Like I think I built like four or five street fighters. I like a street fighter because it is a sport bike. They are fast. And at the same time, they, they have sort of a cruiser feel to them. It's sort of the best of all worlds. Uh, the one thing, and actually, to be honest with you, a lot of sport bikes fit two people better than a lot of um, a lot of the cruisers I've had. Like, my VMAX is not bad. I had a Yamaha Warrior. Uh, I th what was that bike? A Yamaha Warrior. I think it was a 1400 or 17, 1700. And the pegs on it were so high up, my wife was very uncomfortable. It was a hard bike to ride with two people. I have a 17. Oh, the FZOs. I like those too, the FZs. Snowing in Iowa too? Oh, wow. Well, I guess, you know, I live in my own little bubble with the weather. I, I'm only concerned with what the weather's like every day, but I didn't realize it was, it was snowing like that. Uh, but it, I'm hoping the snow for you guys is just one and done. You get it and it's gone, and by the end of the day, you're out barbecuing. At least I hope that's what the weather's like for you. I can't stand it. I remember when I was a kid, when it would snow... I feel like it would snow and we would have three feet of snow and it would just be around for a week and they had bulldozers come out and push stuff out of the way and dump trucks so you can pick them up and throw them in the dump trucks and haul it off. Like that's what snow was like for me when I was a kid. Nowadays it's like a flurry closes the schools. It's, it's crazy. And a lot of times when it snows by me, it's like it snows and it's gone. Snows and then gone. And, and really, there's no sign of winter ever other than bitter cold uh, temperature outside. Um, or sometimes we get freezing rain. Like freezing rain, I don't like because obviously I'm a car person. So freezing rain is just a chance for your car to get totaled. Not that snow isn't either. It's just more dangerous. And what's really dangerous is freezing rain with snow on top. Uh, we could probably talk for hours about those kinds of problems. Um, inside doing homework today. Yeah. You know, I wish, uh, it would be really cool, I, Zoom, you know, it's funny, like, Zoom is a big thing now, but it would be really cool if I could do a live stream, and then I could, I could uh, post stuff up on the live stream and show you different digital images, or vice versa, you can uh, show me, like, what you guys are dealing with, almost like a, a Zoom YouTube meeting, uh, that'd be kind of cool. One, one day, when I could figure out all this uh, live stream stuff, I'll probably come up with a solution for that. I wish what I could do before the live stream starts was, like, I really hate it. In the beginning of the live stream, when I'm when I'm starting the live stream and I'm sitting here tinkering with everything, and you guys are like watching me for the first like five to ten minutes, and I feel weird because no one's in the chat and I'm sitting there just talking randomly and I'm trying to figure out microphones and video. Uh, actually, I'm gonna check real quick see how the video looks. All right, video looks good, cool. Uh, Discord is a good app. Yeah, I've had people ask me. I did start a Discord. Uh, if you look up, if you look up. Uh, Uh, oh, sorry, I'm just reading stuff. If you look up the Discord, I believe I named it Dave's World, and I would probably need your guys' help who know about Discord to sort of help me run the Discord because I don't know anything about the, uh, Discord, but I did start one because I've had people ask, a lot of people ask me to do it. 
It's it's my own um, Discord chat room, I guess it's called. And I don't know if somebody goes into it and leaves, if it actually would show me that. Uh, so if you guys have Discord and you want to find me, just let me know. Oh, is is this at Nicholas your Discord? I don't know. I'm going to sound old now. I don't quite know how to work it just yet. Uh, it took me forever to get used to having an Instagram. Uh, so, uh, all right. So, what, so anyway, um, I don't quite know. Uh, I don't quite know exactly what I wanted to keep talking about. I mean, are you guys bored with the whole tire and alignment talk? Uh, I, there's other things, I guess I did start talking about updates on the cruise. You know, I don't know if all of you guys want to keep hearing about the cruise. Oh, all right. You're commenting too. I'm sorry. I didn't realize what that was at first. My apologies. That's funny. That's funny. Sorry about that. See, see, it shows you how little I know about Discord that I totally thought that that was a Discord link. <laughs> I don't know the server administration for Discord too well. Yeah, neither do I. Um, eventually, I'll figure it out. I mean, eventually, my kids keep talking to me about setting up some kind of gaming thing, and they, they probably need Discord or Twitch or something like that. So one of these days, I'm going to... Uh, I am going to have some kind of a gaming... Like, I, I personally do like gaming too. And uh, one of these days, I'm going to have like a gaming... Somehow, I'm going to figure out a way to do gaming with the kids, and the kids sort of want to do something with gaming on YouTube. I know my son, my son Ryder would really enjoy that, and Hunter, Hunter, Hunter just likes to do stuff with me. Uh, so eventually, he might even be sitting next to me while I'm doing a live stream, just because he likes to be included. He did walk in the one time, and I thought I felt he was being disrespectful, so I asked him to leave. I try to teach the kids to have good values, and if you're going to come in and read people's names and make jokes about their names, which I don't know if you guys like that, if you want him to roast people's screen names, that might be kind of funny. But I'm pretty sure because he's, uh, you know, going to be nine, that most of his jokes are going to be about butts. <laughs> and that's what you deal with when you're a dad. Uh, so, all right. So then, I, so I guess what I could do is uh, talk about, uh, you know, I was sort of mentioning suspensions before. The reason why, the reason why I bring up like a good suspension, good tires, and good brakes is because I don't. I've watched so many people crash cars because they don't quite they want the power like the mustang world is is fruitful with this so i have brake kits that can fit a mustang and for i so you know brakes could be a little expensive most people want brakes on the car just for looks but they don't realize like the braking ability that you can give a car is so much more important than the look i would rather have crappy looking performance calipers than good looking base calipers you know, some little tiny 12-inch rotor with a single piston caliper. I would, I would much rather have like a 14-inch, 15-inch rotor with a four-piston caliper or a six-piston caliper that looks like crap because I know the car is going to stop because of basically my driving style. You know, if I, whatever horsepower I have, I'm going to use that horsepower. But you know, then there's also the situation where the cars are heavy. So if a car is heavy. You know, the average car nowadays is probably four four thousand pounds used to be a heavy vehicle. Four thousand pounds now is light. Uh, so you want to <laughs> what's up, Bopiano? How are you? Uh, you at work today? Yes, I am. Well that's you know that Brembo Dave, you know, I'm concerned about the Brembo Dave name too. Um, in fact my channel originally was Brembo Dave and I got rid of it because I was worried about uh, using the name Brembo. Like I'm a Brembo fan. But someone could look at it like I'm Brembo the company, which I'm not. I'm just a Brembo fan. So I look at it like I'm like let's say I was like I'm not I'm not like like NASCAR, like NASCAR Dave. Like I'm into NASCAR. So my name might be NASCAR Dave. Like I wouldn't want NASCAR to sue me because I'm a fan of NASCAR. Uh, so with Brembo Dave, like I'm a big fan of brakes. You know, I love brakes, so that's why I'm Brembo Dave. They're 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 the number one company I would ever use on anything. I have Brembos on everything, actually. Uh, you're running Monroe shocks all the way around with Eibach lowering springs on my 17 Cruise. Good clearance. I'll probably do coilovers. So I like coilovers. So coils are good. Coils are a good, cheap way to lower your car. What I don't like about coils, just changing the spring, is what happens is you lower the car, and then, and then the shocks that you have, they're not meant for a lowered car, so the shock rides lower. So now you have the shock running lower, so all the fluid that's supposed to cushion the vehicle is not below the shock's piston, it's above it. 
not all of it, but a lot of it. So when the car is riding down the road, you're actually wearing that shock out sooner. So you get into a situation where your car is low and the springs are stiff, but now you have this sort of bouncy ride and the shocks can't really handle the, the undulations in the road. So I like coilovers because when you raise and lower a car with a coilover, not only are you bringing the spring up and down, but you're also bringing the body of the shock up and down. So the, so the, the suspension cushioning moves with the spring. And with that, you also have adjustments where you can slow down or speed up the rebound. And even though, put it to you like this, like a coil spring kit is probably 300 bucks. New aftermarket shocks are probably 200 bucks. So now you're at like five or $600. Coilovers are a thousand bucks. Those springs and shocks, probably the springs will last, but the shocks need to be changed again. So now you're at another 200 bucks. So you're like $700 on coil springs with shocks when for a thousand bucks you can get a coilover system that you can adjust the ride height, any height you want. Typically you can get like a three inch drop out of them and you can also adjust your rebound. And then, no, and then if you have one of those shocks that might go bad in the future, a lot of times they're warrantied. Um, Another day at the gun to head auto repair. <laughs> gun to head auto repair. I like the way you put that. At least you're one of the few people out there that works on cars for a living and you and you enjoy it. Even though there are Let me rephrase that. A lot of mechanics enjoy what they do. What they hate is dealing with customer service while working on their cars. Or they hate dealing with a problem that shouldn't happen. There's a lot of cars out there that that just have a problem because they have a problem and there's nothing, you just can't get the problem out of the vehicle because it, it's literally possessed by a ghost or something. Something is up with it and there's just nothing you can do about it. It can go to 15 mechanics and that car will never be right because there's something wrong from the factory. Uh, so days like that stress out a mechanic because no matter what you do, you know you can fix the problem, the car refuses to be fixed and it does happen. Um, Let's see, interesting. My shocks aren't too bad yet. I recently did it. The ride is nice. I'm not saying all I'm not saying all coil springs are like that. Keep in mind that I come from a world where now I'm almost 40, so I dealt with coil springs in my 20s with technology from 20 years ago. Uh yeah, I want to make sure my math is right. So coil spring technology when I was young might not have been that good. Coil spring technology today might be, but I'm past the point where I'm going to try a coil spring. If I can buy a coil over kit, like coil over suspension, I'm going to buy that before I put coils in because I know I can get everything in one shot, put it in and I'm done and I can adjust it because on the fly. So, so like with a coil spring, you put it in, if it rides hard, it rides hard, you're done. That's the way it's going to ride. You can't do anything about it. You could change shocks all you want. Those springs are going to make the ride the way it's going to be. You might get lucky and maybe put a softer tire and that might help it. But when you put a coil over kit in, you can literally adjust the rebound. You, like, you basically, you can adjust it to be soft. You can adjust it to be stiff. Uh, you can adjust how the rebound is. So like when you hit a bump, the car goes down. You can adjust how slow it rebounds. So there's a reason that I sort of like coilovers. And BC Racing, I use in a lot of my cars in the past. I do, I do like BC Racing because they do what more expensive coilover kits can do for... Uh, for like a cheaper price. I'm not saying they're cheap, but for expensive coilover kits, they're the cheapest. Uh, oh, Jeff, that was weird. How's it going? I saw a message come through, then it disappeared. I didn't know you could do that. Oh, I guess you could, right? Because you can delete comments. Um, it says retracted, so I'm assuming you delete, you typed something wrong by accident, which, which is okay. Uh, so then... Um, so what's everybody up to today? So so on a Saturday, I assumed, my, my first assumption, which I realized later, was more people would have free time. But then I realized that a, a lot of you, a lot of people who like my channel are mechanics. So Saturday might not be the best day because this is your overtime day. Or for some people, uh, like Fopiano, I think you, if memory serves, I think you're the foreman of a shop. So you probably don't get many days off. Even if you're sick, you're probably always in. Uh, so I don't know if, if if you guys want me to 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 basically do a Sunday afternoon, let me know. Or if you want me to do during the week, I don't know which one is better. I I personally think during the week might be better. Uh, I really just need you guys to tell me. But I'm I'm gonna keep putting these live streams up, and the, and the more feedback I get, basically what I'll do is every live stream I put up, 
I'll see which one had the best response, and I'll, I'll focus on using those times and days. That, that's, that's what I guess I'll do. Um, so if everyone's working, so half of you guys, I mean, some of you are probably just getting up. Uh, uh, like Jeff, you might be, I, I think, if memory serves, I think you're in the middle of the country somewhere, so it might still be early morning for you. And some of you guys are in California, so you might still be asleep. I know I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Summit. Uh, I'm going to call him Summit because I don't know if he wants his uh, real name out there. But Summit, uh, I met him, not met him, but he was here yesterday. I put an intercooler in his car. So I was hanging out with him and his buddy, um, Mark, and they were a lot of fun. I enjoyed hanging out with them. So I want to give him a shout out because he's probably not going to be in the chat right now, but he's going to watch the chat later. Uh, so, so the shout outs for you guys. Uh, let's see. When I worked at BJ... Wholesale Tire... Well, I'm sorry. Let me read that again, Jeff. When I worked at BJ's Wholesale Tire Bay, the customer want all the all kinds of things done. Yeah, because we weren't just tires. It was propane tank filling station. Wow. Yeah, my brother... Oh, you're Central New York. Okay. Oh, yeah, you're up there by Fopiano. Uh, you're out by Syracuse. That's a nice area. I think you're out... Uh, you have a lot of mountains out there, I think, right? I, I, again, I, this is, I've only been up there that area like maybe once or twice in my life, so that's what I think it's like. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, BJ's, my brother worked there years ago, and he, would, he, he told me one time, he's like, man, I had a day where I had to change the oil, then I had to go put lumber in the back of someone's truck. It was basically like Home Depot with a garage in the middle of it for him. He hated it. Uh, so he, he, uh, he left the place pretty quick. 18-inch. Uh, so, oh, um, Beal. The 18 inch wheels. Um, did you go from like 16 inch to 18 inch? Did you notice any difference with the ride quality doing like basically a, like a smaller sidewall? That actually fits right into the subject I was talking about with tires today, like sidewall. You know, it's funny that I see other guys build a performance car and then, you know, the car came from the factory with like a 16 or 17 inch wheel and they'll go throw 20s on it and then they can't figure out why the car is not getting the power to the ground or going around a turn. The amount of weight that a 20-inch wheel or even a 19-inch wheel has on, in some situations is so heavy that it's actually, it actually gets harder to drive a car, um, especially when you go around a turn, too. Yes, the ride quality is rougher and loud, louder road noise, yeah. Well, the reason you're getting a rougher... Well, you're getting a rougher ride quality because of the sidewall. So if you went from a 16-inch to an 18-inch, your sidewall basically went from probably four or five inches down to like maybe two or three inches so because of that smaller sidewall uh you have no cushion now uh in your ride and then on top of that uh depending on the tire you put on so if it's a cheaper tire it might have a real stiff sidewall uh you have to basically look at the um the speed rating like uh, depending on the tire like a higher speed rating will ha it'll be a softer tire yeah sidewall is only two inches yeah so I noticed on my cruise too, because I went from 16s to 18s, that the ride quality didn't change too much. But I but I have good tires on the car, so the ride quality is is you know pretty fair. And then when I went with coilovers, I was able to adjust them just right to where the ride quality. So the car rides a tiny bit stiffer, but man, when I go around a turn, does that car handle? I, I love it. Um, but yeah, sidewall plays a big, big, big difference in your ride quality and handling. You know, I was watching a. I think it was a Top Gear Australia, and I was watching them, I want to say 10 years ago, it was the 05, basically for us it's the GTO, but for them it was the Holden Monaro, and it was it was basically like their Shelby, like out it's like in Australia, somebody who builds like an HSV, an HSV Monaro in Australia is like getting yourself a GT500 from Shelby in America. But they put 20-inch wheels, and they ran the car around the track. And then they decided to throw 18-inch wheels on the exact same car, and it went two seconds faster because the, the, the extra sidewall helped the car grip. It helped the car go around a turn. So that extra cushion, basically the tire, you know, when you go around a turn, that extra cushion helps the tire squish and widen, and it gives you better grip going around a turn. So they actually proved, at least in that, who knows if it was true or not. It was in a video. Uh, you know, on TV, but I would imagine if Top Gear put it out there, they want to be as truthful as possible. Cheaped out on tires. Let's see, I kind of cheaped out on tires. Still a reputable man. I can, a brand, I can hit corners. Beautiful. Well, that's good. I mean, look, I'm not saying, Beal, I don't want you to feel like, uh, 
like I'm um, crapping on 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 your decision or anything like that because I have the, literally the same setup on my car. I have I have 18 inch wheels, basically a two inch tri tread uh, tread wall, sorry side wall. I have coilovers, and uh, my ride quality, like I said, is stiffer too. So so being stiffer doesn't mean it's bad either. I just I just want to let you guys know that. Uh, let's see, you have an Eco 2017 inch rims when i had my 235 55 16s on my gen one it would ride nice yeah yeah adding a sway bar i had somebody ask me about the gen 2 coming out with a sway bar kit so i'm thinking of uh i'm thinking of figuring out a sway bar system i do have a couple sway bars in the shop i was going to test i just didn't get a chance at all okay bill yeah good i just wanted to make sure you knew that but i'm glad i'm glad that you're uh you understand yeah you know i uh you know i come from a world i don't know how old you are but I come from. I wish I could see your guys' faces, but I come from a world where I grew up with no internet. Then we grew up with dial-up internet, and then social media was created. And then, with social media, came sensitivity. And then you, you now we're at the point where you could say one word, and people want to end someone's career. So I worry. I worry about people misconstruing what I'm saying. I'm really just thinking technically and I'm explaining technical stuff, but I don't want to, I don't want anyone to ever feel like something they did to their car is is something you should feel bad about because of something I said. I never want that to happen. I'm just, you know, just thinking out loud. So that's why that's why I act the way I do sometimes when it comes to something like that. Uh, what coilovers do you have? There are not many options for the Gen 2. Uh, Nicholas, I have the BC Racing. It's the black, the bodies of them are black with gold springs. No, it's black and gold with black springs. I think the, the spring color difference um, lets you know which type of uh, spring you have. Like they have like a race spring and they have like a street spring. So I believe I have the street springs on it. Oh, so you're going to be 22 in a month. Yeah. So yeah, so Beal, you live in a world where you probably never not had the internet and you probably never not had, well... I shouldn't say never not had social media, but I mean at the point where you got your first phone, which I'm assuming might have been when you were like 15, social media was there. Now, it's different now than it was back then, but it was there. For me, like when I was 15, I was literally riding my bicycle to the comic book store. Uh, I, that's what I was doing. I was collecting Pokemon cards. There was no internet. Uh, there was, well, no, 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 I'm sorry. At 15, there was internet. Uh, but there was no social media and there was no high speed internet. It was all dial up. And I remember back then I was like, what was I doing? I was like, uh, I would buy Pokemon cards and I would just use eBay. I would sell some Pokemon cards, buy some other cards. Like that's basically what I was doing. And then, you know, 16, 17 rolled around and I discovered cars and well, cars were always in my life. But back then, um, back then, uh, cars just consumed me by the time I was able to get my license. Hey, Ken. Uh, let's see. You said uh, I've also seen the Holden specific video saying 19-inch wheels are better. There, oh, I'm sorry. It was 19-inch wheels. So yeah, I was amazed that adding a little bit of sidewall was actually able to make that whole that for me it's a GTO. But the fact that adding a little bit of sidewall made that car two seconds faster on that track was amazing. I believe it was a two second, even a, even a one second gain is amazing. Uh, Beal, yeah, I got my first cell phone at like 12, and then social media at 14. Yeah. So for me, social media didn't really... So back back when social media started, it was MySpace. And really all MySpace was, and this is going to age me, all MySpace was, was basically just pictures and what music do you like. And I, there wasn't much commenting. And then it turned into like Facebook sort of got rid of MySpace because now all of a sudden you can put pictures up and then you can comment. And then back then you couldn't delete anything. So if you misspelled something, it was permanent. If you said something nasty, it was permanent. So that is what basically grew into people being sensitive because of someone making, like a lot of times jokes were made, right? You would make a joke back then and it's a sarcastic joke, but you don't know how to punctuate things properly or let anyone know that it was a joke. So people read a comment that was a joke, literally. So now that sparked other arguments and just social media like really ramped out of control. So nowadays... I'm not sure it's better, but people really understand. Like, if you say something on the internet, take it with a grain of salt. If you if you say something in a certain way, people can read through 
words now most of the time if you understand it that that might that was a joke and you get it now you know almost like reading a person's face in fact i meet people now that when you when you talk to them face to face they don't know how to read you but if they talk to you on a phone they understand exactly what you're saying it's weird it's sort of a flip-flop nowadays uh let's see beal uh i had a cd i had i had all cd games and i didn't have the internet till i was 13 okay cool all right so well you didn't have the internet till you were 13 um, that doesn't mean it didn't exist, which is what I meant before, but CD games, man, I, I wish, I miss video games too, like, video games, when they were still on a disc and you pop them in your system, that era of a company making a game that was a AAA rated game that was meant to be amazing and because they wanted to win some kind of award for being the best game designer, those days are over. Nowadays, it's like every game I download, first of all, it has to be downloaded, my hard drive only fits so many games. I have to wait for my connection speed. You know, like if I'm playing a game, I got to be logged on the internet. The connection speeds, you know, sometimes are slowing the game down. Sometimes it's it's live on, on, I have to be hooked up to the internet to get the data to come through. And all these games are the same. They just have a different name and different types of characters. But it's like they all use the same, like, box. Like here, they're like, here's a video game kit. Make the game the same as this. And all the games are the same. I miss, like, the Call of Duties. Like the first, like Modern Warfare Three, I miss like uh, 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 Devil May Cry. Like I know they just came out with them a couple years ago. It was okay, but I miss like the older versions of like Devil May Cry, where it was just about consume. You get consumed in the game. I miss Metal Gear Solid. You know, the later on Metal Gear Solid was so overdone, so over budget because they just they expanded too far. Like bring it back to the story. Like I miss that stuff. You know. Uh, oh, <laughs> what's up, Travis? Yeah, I, I, you know what? Now that my kids, I know you know what I'm talking about, but now that my kids are, uh, now that my kids are uh, older, they're, they're getting into Pokemon cards again. So it's kind of fun. I'm busting out all my old Pokemon cards, and they're so excited to see like all the different Charizards that I have and Blastoise and Mewtwo's, uh, C and C Red Alert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've been getting into sort of more. You know, I, I, it was a happy accident. So I do a lot of video editing, obviously, for the channel. And because I do video editing, um, I can destroy a computer's motherboard and hard drive. Like, video editing overheats a computer badly. So I built my own... Um, I bought a gaming PC, which I still found a way to destroy that computer. So I built my own now. And I'm really getting into... You know, I started getting into StarCraft. So I'm teaching the boys how to play StarCraft, which is a free computer game to try. And I'm trying to teach them strategy. And it's not the most popular game anymore. Like, I love the original StarCraft and Brood Wars was amazing. And that's another example of, like, a AAA rated game versus now. Um, the stuff you get for free is entertaining, but it's not as good as it could be. And I really wish they put that same effort into it. So I'm getting into computer gaming. So I wanted to start small with StarCraft. And I'm going to work our way up to, like, other games. And what I really like is, like... Grand Theft Auto, right? They came out with Grand Theft Auto 10 years ago. Rockstar Games does not have to make another game ever again. They could just keep giving you add-ons to that one game because that's how good it is. And I want to get into like a PC version of it where you can get mods. I don't know if mods are illegal. I don't think they are. But um, I want to get into some mods and try out all the cool new stuff that they have. Um, especially the superhero. Like it's really cool that uh, some guys have like the Hulk in the game or Spider-Man and they make... Or Superman, you can fly around as Superman, you can be the Punisher. Like, some of the stuff you can do with Grand Theft Auto is better than some of the re re the actual games they put out. Um, so, since we're on game subject, what's, what's, are any of you guys playing any modern games? I know I'm a car channel, but I'm also into video games, obviously. And, and actually, I'm into a lot of things. Uh, obviously, you can see the Groot on the wall, usually. I think you guys can see it from here. Maybe, maybe. There's Groot, see? So I'm into a lot of stuff, but uh, so I've been I've been hunting for a really good AAA rated game. So any of you guys that don't know what that is, like a AAA rated game, imagine it like imagine it like Avengers, right? Avengers came out in the box office. Avengers would be a AAA rated movie, the best of the best. A AAA rated game is the best of the best, and. Years ago, like when I was growing up, a AAA rated game was a little bit more money, but I would those games were so good that you you'll play them today. That's how good they were. I just don't feel like I found that right now. Uh, oh, I'm lying. I think Spider-Man 
And Spider-Man 2 for PS5 are probably right up there with what I would call a AAA rated game. I was really excited for the Avengers game, but they went over budget. And uh, it came out strong, but halfway through the game, you could tell the budget got in the way, unfortunately. Uh, Travis buying... Yeah, Travis. So, yeah, I'm, I'm stuck having to buy Pokemon cards for the kids, except now when... I used to always buy Hot Wheels, which were a buck, and now Pokemon cards are $4. So I tell the kids, if you want to pack a Pokemon cards, you're going to have to earn it. Or uh, you get money for Christmas, you're going to have to pay the difference. I'll put the dollar in for the Hot Wheel, but you guys are paying the rest because I want them to understand it's an expensive hobby because I probably have thousands of dollars in Pokemon cards from when I was a kid up till now. Like, I don't buy a lot now. Uh, it's, it's Well, I buy them a lot for the kids, but... I want to say like mid twenties. I, I sort of stopped because I was so busy with my job and stuff. How did you get to the Dino? Wait, how did you get to Dino the Cruise? They changed the game a bunch. My son loves GTA Five. Yeah, you know, I started getting back into GTA Five again because uh, uh, I just wanted to see. Well, it's a good game, you know. So I got back into it because there hasn't been like I, what was that game? Oh, Cyberpunk, right? So Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk, they marketed the hell out of it. They got Keanu Reeves involved with it. I mean, they did everything they could to make Cyberpunk look amazing. Apparently, Cyberpunk is good on the computer. Cyberpunk on the video, on the uh, Xbox, and Cyberpunk on uh, PlayStation 5, awful. It's half finished. A lot of the things that were supposed to be in the game aren't there because the processing power isn't there. It was, you know, you know what game's not good? I can't say it's crap now, but when it was released, uh, a lot of times they were publicly saying they're going to give people their money back because a lot of people were upset. And the problem was, is all the investors, it takes a long time to make a good game. It takes, I can't even imagine, it takes more time to make a good game than it does to make a movie. And the productions are usually millions of dollars, believe it or not. You wouldn't think that. So the budget got in the way and they had to leave a lot of stuff out and the game just wasn't good. And I was expecting that to be a better Grand Theft Auto. So what I'm hoping is when I get back into Cyberpunk, I'm hoping, you know, maybe a year or two from now when I'm really back into like computer gaming that Cyberpunk has so many mods that with mods, it's like the best game it could be and it's better than Grand Theft Auto. But Grand Theft Auto has been doing, they, I mean, Grand Theft Auto has been around GTA 5, I think for 10 years. So Cyberpunk has a long way to go to be as good as them. What might happen is and GTA will come out with a new game that will probably, well, GTA 5 is already better than Cyberpunk, but GTA GTA is going to come out with a new game, and it's going to be even more amazing, and that's the next thing people are going to play for the next 10 years. That's what I'm hoping happens, and I'm hoping it's epic. They, they have big shoes to fill, and I'm hoping we haven't had a new GTA for five years because they took, I'm sorry, 10 years, because they took 10 years to do a better version. I know we've had some releases here and there of, like, uh, remastered versions come out, uh, which luckily, you know, even with even if you have an old copy of the game and you can update it to the remastered version nowadays too. Resident Evil, that's another good one. I remember Resident Evil back in the day they came out where the same people that did Resident Evil, I think it was Dinosaur Hunter, that was a really cool game. So it was basically the same same like shock scare type of game and same um, have to figure out puzzles type of situation, but instead of it being like a zombie, it would be like a raptor would pop out or 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 a T-Rex or something. I wish they would do another game like that, or if they did like a Jurassic Park game where it's sort of like Resident Evil, but but a little more action based. And then, uh, but it, it's basically it's scary, but with action. I want a Jurassic Park game like that. I do play Jurassic Park Builder, which is a lot of fun. Uh, I do I enjoy that game a lot, especially since uh, my kids love it. So it's a lot of fun to get in there and 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 build park and then have. A tornado come and destroy stuff and watch dinosaurs eat people it's 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 a load it's a load of fun so i've been playing part two it's very challenging part two but it's it's the graphics are really nice they did a really good job with all the mechanics in the game um by the way uh i, I hope you guys don't care i know i do a lot of car stuff but i hope you don't care if i kind of go off subject and talk about other things but uh let me know. I mean, honestly, let me know. If the majority of you don't want to hear about, like, video games, let me know. But I, I, I do enjoy video games, and half of you guys are parents, so you know. At least if you're not into games, um, you uh, you probably play a game or two because your kids just want to play, you know. I know for me, like, my kids typically always want to play Rayman, which is a lot of fun because we play the, 
there's these boards. Imagine Rain Man like Mario. So Mario is like a, a, what, like a, a parkour game. So basically everybody knows Mario. You run and you jump over stuff. You have bad guys you jump on and kill. So with Rain Man, you basically imagine a Mario game where every time you jump, it's to the beat of a song. So like Black Betty is one of the songs. Um, Eye of the Tiger is one of the songs. So it's a lot of fun. So when I, when I play Rain Man, it's a lot of fun getting on there with the kids. And then we, uh, we play along with the music, which I enjoy. Um, so what else? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how long I've been on this live stream. Let's see. So I've been on the live stream for, I don't know how many hours. I don't know how long we've been on this. So I just, I think what I want to do is I'm probably going to, uh, again, you guys know I'm new at the live streaming. I'm trying to get a, a handle on this. I feel like we've been doing this for about an hour. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock. So I've been on here for about an hour. Uh, I'm going to try and limit these to about an hour just because, uh, I, uh, oh, off topic is fine. All of us get off topic now and then. Yeah, you know what, Jeff? I don't, when I do the live streams, I don't know if you guys want me just to be me, if you want me to have a subject. You know, if, um, what helps is if you guys have questions uh, about literally anything. I don't even care if it's about a kitchen stove. Like, I've, I've fixed so many things over the years. Like, I know how to fix appliances. I know how to fix toys. You know, I have to fix toys constantly because I have kids, but even my own toys. Like, I grew up poor, so I constantly would have broken, a toy would break, so I would take a bunch of broken toys and make new toys because I couldn't afford to buy new stuff, so uh, I, I pretty much fix anything. If you guys have questions about anything, just ask because I, I like that because it gives me a new, a new topic to talk about. Sorry, my alarm's going off. It gives me a new topic to talk about, which I enjoy. So yeah, so, uh, so today, again, you know, uh, I appreciate you guys letting me know about the mic, so moving forward, I think this camera's really good. I think the uh, the microphone is actually, I was able to hear myself momentarily, so the microphone is awesome. So moving forward, I'm going to use this setup, I think. Uh, I just have to figure out the best day. Uh, so far, I'm thinking during the week, late, uh, what I'll try and do is maybe 7 o'clock Eastern Standard. So hopefully everybody else in the rest of the country are getting out of work or, or, or just about to get out of work. Um, and that's maybe the times I'll choose. And Oh, and I, I went over this earlier, too. You guys on iPhone, if you're trying to join as part of the membership, if you're on an iPhone, the join button will not show up. Uh, and you cannot go, like like if you log into YouTube on, your, uh, on Safari, Safari will also not show you the join button. You have to actually log on to a computer and, and join through the computer to get onto the membership so you can get all the perks and stuff. I'm just letting you guys know because I literally was just dealing with YouTube for hours. Uh, trying to fix this and I figured out what the problem is. Well, we know what the problem is. YouTube has no fix for it. So I'm just letting everybody know that this is what you have to do. Uh, uh, thanks again, guys. And uh, thanks again for Summit. I know you're not in the chat, but you're going to see this later. Uh, and uh, I, I appreciate everything, guys. Have a very nice day. Oh, seven. Okay. I I'm going to probably shoot for seven o'clock. Um, Fopiano, thank you. You know, Fopiano, I, I appreciate all you guys coming. Fopiano, I, I know you're actually at work, and I really appreciate you helping me out uh, by, by coming and watching. Uh, it's a great support. All of you guys, thank you. Um, all right, so I'm going to I'm gonna sign off now. I'll talk to you guys later. And next time, I'm, I'm going to choose like a, like after maybe about a 7 o'clock time for this. I'll just figure out a day. Maybe I like Wednesdays, so maybe we'll do Wednesdays at 7 every other week or something like that. So thanks again, everybody. Have a nice weekend.